Shabbat Shalom. We all know the ancient and oft quoted Jewish wisdom that if you save a life, it is as if you have saved a world. We all know, we all believe that each human on this earth was formed in God's image, B'Tselem Elohim. We are all holy. And yet, all too often, we forget the magic, the incredible and unique brilliance of every person in our midst. All too often, we see people simply for the functions they perform in our lives. We see grocery delivery people and mail carriers. We see landscape artists and clerks. We see receptionists and employees. And we forget that which in each one of those people we see lies a whole world of wisdom, life experiences, and love. Today, I want to share with you the story of someone you may have seen, but may not ever have really seen. Drake Thadzi was born in 1964 in Lilongwe, Malawi. 1964, Malawi had just been liberated from oppressive British colonial rule and was setting in settling into a totalitarian regime led by President Bandas, which would last for the next 30 years. It was a tough time. Death squads roamed the streets killing political dissidents and ordinary citizens had to demonstrate ID cards, proving their affiliation to the proper political party before they could buy groceries or ride a bus. Drake's mother was murdered in front of his eyes. He learned to fight out of necessity. Boxing for him wasn't a sport, it was a survival tactic. 20 years later, Drake was invited to represent Malawi in the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. It was a journey that would transform his life, open doors he had never imagined. For the next 14 years, he traveled the world as a professional light heavyweight boxer. He can tell you stories you would not believe. Stories of intrigue, high-end parties, close calls. Stories of racism he endured and adventures he still dreams about. Over the course of his career, he would fight in 40 professional bouts, winning 30, drawing one, and losing only nine. He even beat three-time world champion James Tony here at the Foxwood Casino. At the end of his boxing career, Drake found an unlikely job working as a caretaker and gravedigger at the Linwood Memorial Park here in Ranwolf. Drake loves the Linwood Memorial Park. He loves it so much he lives at the Linwood Memorial Park every day, all day. He loves it so much he got married on the grass overlooking the lake at the Linwood Memorial Park because he said it is one of the most beautiful places ever. And he doesn't just love the park, he loves his work at the park. Drake has been there for more than 20 years and he can tell you the name of every person he's buried, he can tell you their story, their dreams, their family, he remembers. And he doesn't just remember the people he's buried, he remembers their friends and their loved ones. 
He can direct people to graves of friends, but he also looks out for people. And if he hasn't seen someone in a while, he'll come up and ask how they're doing. Drake cares deeply. He's a big teddy bear. He's super tall and super strong still. And just a heart of gold. He has the most incredible laugh, but is totally incapable of telling a joke. He'll start it off okay, but inevitably he'll blurt out the punchline too early and then laugh as if he told it correctly from the start. He's terrified of heights. And yet, when a friend suggested he should try out flying, he immediately started taking lessons and now is just a few hours away from earning his pilot's license. He's gentle and kind and dreams of retiring in Alabama, where he's been building what his friends describe as a mansion you wouldn't be able to imagine. All the guys love him. Whenever they get vacation, they go with him to Alabama to help him build his retirement dream. Drake is there for us in our hardest moments. When the world around us recedes and all we can focus on is loss, he's quietly there in the shadows, guiding our loved ones to their final resting place. I find it so comforting to know that he's there that his care is holding them, that he's no longer boxing for sport, but now he's fighting to protect the legacy and the resting place of our loved ones. The next time you find yourself at Linwood Memorial Park, I hope you'll seek Drake out. He's one of the most delightful people I know. But more than that, I hope that we will all use this time as an opportunity to seek out the people whom we have not seen, the people who are immeasurably helpful to us, and yet whose stories lie at the periphery of our awareness. What would happen if we chose to really look? What would happen if we asked deep questions of meaning if we shared in more powerful ways, what would change? And you may be saying, Eliza, that's lovely. I love that idea. But I'm sitting here in my living room. I'm sitting in the same spot I've been sitting in for the last 10 months. I haven't met a single new person. I, I haven't even seen a single person outside of my household off screen for 10 months. That's a lovely thought to deeply engage with strangers, but how and why now? I hear you. I hear you deeply, and you're totally right. It is totally illogical to do this work now when we are more disconnected than ever before, and yet, I think this work could never be more important. Each one of us is feeling unseen. No matter how many Zoom calls you are on, it is not the same as being in person, and there has never been a greater need to look deeply at one another. So I want to propose one small shift. We all have a how are you reflex. When we get on the phone, when we're walking down the street, we see someone pre-COVID. Now, when you get on a Zoom call, the first thing is always, how are you? And it's a question with no real answer, because we don't expect anyone to say anything other than fine, maybe a tired here or there. 
but it's not necessarily a question that deeply gets at where people are at. I want to propose a new question. What if we started every conversation with a personal question that goes beyond how are you, that elicits an honest, authentic, and unique response? What would happen if when you called the service center to solve internet problems or when you were on the phone with the receptionist at your doctor's office, you checked in with them, asked them questions about their life, about their day. What would happen if we all started the mail carrier project? We reached out to our mail carriers, leaving them a, a card, sharing a little bit about us and inviting them to share about themselves. We don't have to be limited by our worlds. We don't have to be limited by quarantine. We can choose to see one another. And this doesn't just go for people we haven't seen. This also goes for those who think differently than we do, who approach life differently, who have different practices. What if we use this time to get really good at having conversations with people who disagree with us? who are different than us. The late Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, the Krona Levracha, shared in a recent TED Talk the following. As a young man, I was self-obsessed and thoroughly unpleasant to know until one day I saw across the courtyard a girl who was everything that I wasn't. She radiated sunshine, she emanated joy, I found out her name was Elaine. We met, we talked, we married. And 47 years, three children, and eight grandchildren later, I can safely say it was the best decision I ever took in my life. Because it's the people not like us that make us grow. It's the people not like us that make us grow. I have to confess, I cannot tell you how many times I stood next to Drake at the Linwood Memorial Park without truly seeing him. Some time ago, maybe three years, I was at the Linwood Memorial Park standing by a grave with David Dector, one of the funeral directors at Levine's. And David Dector said to me, Eliza, have you met Drake? And I said, yes, of course I know Drake. And David Dector said, but do you really know Drake? And then he turned to Drake and said, Drake, will you tell her about the time you were in Germany? If it wasn't for David Dector, I would never have gotten to know Drake's incredible life story. If it wasn't for David Dector, I would have never seen beyond his role. I would have never invited the powerful questions that make me excited to see him now every time I drive to Randolph. Each one of us is surrounded by worlds of brilliance, worlds of mystery, worlds of love, worlds of incredible, unique blessing. It's amazing what you can see if you really look. Shabbat Shalom, we rise.